Okay. All right, we're going to pick back up where we left off. Uh, we went through learning how to use the torches. Now, let's put it to use. All right, we've all, I've already cleaned, sanded and cleaned the copper pipes that we're going to be using. It's time to apply the flux. I had already put some flux on one of these joints. But I'm going to add a little more right here. And we'll start off. But as I said before, it does not matter what direction the pipe is pointing as far as which way the sorter is going to move. The sorter and flux, we can actually help it out by letting it uh, or position our heat in the right place. The sorter is going to move towards the heat. Okay, But keep in mind, if you have one part that has more mass than the other part, you want to concentrate the heat on the part with the most mass. In other words, the biggest piece in most cases. All right. While I've got it in my hands, what if I got a situation that I have a component that cannot stand the heat? Well, I need to protect it. This is a heat block, it's a paste that would go on the pipe. If we put it around the pipe, it helps to prevent that heat from, from being transmitted through uh, conduction. But that doesn't always suffice in itself. It's good to have a wet rag or something of that nature close by, or in many cases you may have to disassemble the part while installing it. Okay. Alright, I think we're ready to go. Now the first thing I'm going to use is my bead tank. Now, folks ask me from time to time, which is best? It's opinions. I'll be the first to tell you that this bead tank is one that I use probably 95% of my time. There are times when I would need the acetylene oxy outfit, so I can't rule it out. But by changing the torch tip heads, then that, uh, that will take through the different heat ranges. This particular one, we'll go ahead and get going here. This is going to be a soft sorter or a soldering process. notice that I didn't put it on but one side. That's because if it's flux right, if it's fitting right, capillary action will take it all the way around. Now, a little mirror and a flashlight is, is, is going to be your friend. Okay? The funny thing about it is, is you can do everything correct and sometimes you still may not get that solder all the way around or the bracing material all the way around. Get you a light, a little flashlight, a mirror, and look at what you do. A visual inspection will save you a lot of headaches later on down, or down the road. Okay. I want to pass this around. I want you to look at it, and you should see a ring of sorter all the way around. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to it up just a little bit that may actually help you be able to see. <coughs> While that one's going around, I'm going to be preparing my other one. And talking about that one, if I had continued to add solder to it, I would have built it to pipe. Okay? Doesn't take just enough to fill in between the two pipes. Okay? Capillary action is what does that. No. So you say you are you cool with this? Mm-hmm. That was the solder. That was the solar process. 
Yeah. 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 That's, that's the capillary action taking place. Okay. One of the problems with the, with the solder that I just used is it's just not strong enough for the refrigeration and air conditioning work. Straight water lines, uh, things that don't, uh, are units that may not have vibration in them, but refrigeration and air conditioning systems have vibrations in them. And it will break loose. Plus, in some places, it just gets to the point where it gets to be deep. So, we go up a step. The next step up is a silver bearing solder. Okay, this is still done at temperatures under uh, 800 degrees. It's a lot stronger than the solder. The, the 95.5 or the solder that I just used, but it's still not a brazing process. I'm actually going to use a liquid tight cleaner this time. Now the liquid, I can go ahead and put a little bit on there, but I'm going to show you something else that we can do. Now I've already cleaned both of these pipes. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of heat. about the liquid gloves. Uh, and there's also a paste that can be used. Paste you want to put on there before you. This doesn't seem like enough, does it? If I overheat this, I guarantee you it's not going to stick. I would have to remove it, take it back apart, clean it back up. It's quite a process. Okay. Having a wet rag with you when you're doing this work, that's a good tool. No doubt about it. You definitely don't want to grab a hold of this stuff before you cool it off. Now, you might say to yourself, I'm not going to do that. Okay? I guarantee you, your mind get concentrated on the job that you're doing, figuring out, I actually use too much on this one, y'all. I got a big old blob down here. That don't even look good. <laughs> uh, we'll hold it that way so it looks good. <laughs> Let's see if that's... All right, just touch it. Okay. Made it around it. When you do this project, if you want to check to see just how well you're getting the solders in there, cut the joint. You should see the pipe on the outside, a ring of solder, and then the pipe on the inside. Okay? If you, you can see that. If you don't see that continuous ring, then it did pull all the way up in there. That's one of the quick ways that you can check to see how well you're doing. All right, so far I have been using this particular torch. Something that I didn't point out was the beauty of this particular torch is that the flame goes around the pipe and wraps around the pipe. I'll use it again in a few minutes, but you notice that when that happens. When I use the settling <coughs> I get more of a pinpoint heat point, okay? The heat is concentrated in, in, in one point. It, it'll go around, but the main heat is going to be on that one point. All right, when I do this, I'm going to have to move my torch a whole lot more than I did last time. And you're also going to see that this is going to be a much, much hotter temperature. Okay, again, I want to use the proper flux for the job, for the, for the filler rod. In this case, I'm going to be using a high concentration of silver. Y'all know what prices of uh, precious metals are have done. 
here needless to say, and this has been some stuff. You know, I don't know what the cost is, especially today. <laughs> it's probably more today than it was yesterday, I doubt that much. Uh, but I, I can tell you a little something about the seal cost, which we had not got to yet. At one time, I was paying about $40 a pound for this okay? And then uh, backing up into the uh, early 80s, I had uh, a couple pounds of silk box on the truck, and within a week, that same two pounds had gone from $40 a pound to $160 a pound. So we were actually calling in as we finished up the jobs and asking what the current price was. We were actually selling it just like you can sell gold on the market. The prices are changing so quickly. Well, the price of the job has changed. What's that? The price of the job. Well, absolutely, because I mean, what was the materials itself was, was changing so much. Uh, we would have to go for the current prices. that okay like I said now this plane is much hotter in one point the hottest part of this plane is right there where the two cones come together it does wrap around but you'll find on larger pipes sometimes you have to keep the concentration at the point where you are at if you can get that evenly heated all the way around that's the trick and then you're going to have to put this where you want it. It does have some capillary action, some flow, but not like the regular silicone. If I were to be doing this in front of a plumber, he would say, man, you have overheated that pipe. I have not. Okay? We have to bring it up to the point of having good flow. Now that's hot. <laughs> Y'all hear that sound change? I haven't changed the pressure on here. What just happened was when I first touched that with the rag, that water in that rag turned to steam. It was actually pushing the rag off of the pipe until it cooled down enough to where it could come back, pressure the steam itself within the rag. Now that sounds crazy, but I guarantee you if you did grab a hold of that, Nobody's mind's quick enough to even know they got burnt until it's after it's all over with and done. This is actually stronger than the copper itself. Okay. By the way, I didn't say this while ago, but you always want to wipe the flux off. The flux will corrode the pipe. See if you can see a big difference there. Yes. Now, was it because like different type of um, material you would use that you like to go around like that? Or because of the torque? Okay, combination of both. This does not flow as well as the sorters do. You need to actually make sure that it goes all the way around. It will flow somewhat through capillary, but you actually have to put it where, it, where you want it. Okay, the sorters, they use the capillary action to pull up into the jar. Like I say, this will somewhat, but not entirely. You actually want to go through the places. In fact, I'll show you on our next piece that we do uh, how we're going to use the silk box to do that. Okay, David, you might mention that the material with the high silver content is 